Hello? Hello? Hey, how's it going? Um, okay. So you were feeling a little strongly? Yeah. So what was uh, happening? Sorry. No, no problem. No problem at all. <laughs> Feelings. They don't feel good, but they're good for you. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I just got really scared. Like, um. Because, um. When you didn't message me back, or, um. I thought, you know, maybe there was. I had done something wrong. And, you know, you didn't want to talk to me or something. And then I felt like I never, um, like, be able to figure this stuff out. And and it's, it, it's just been really emotional because I can't... I keep feeling like I have to go back there. <laughs> back to see your parents? Yeah. Right, right. To, like, because there are things I need to get, and it's getting really scary. Right, 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 right. And so the way that you sort of planned your escape was to begin detaching yourself from their financial support. But when you indicated that or your desire for that, things got worse. Is that right? Yeah. And how did the things get worse? What happened? Well, they told me, like, you know, we, we were, we've been saving for, you know, paying for your college, and it was, you know, something that was making us really proud. And, you know, as if I was, like, hurting them by trying to make a decision for myself. And um, I kind of pointed that out to them. I was like, look, I can't really base my life decisions around your desire for a sense of pride and, and that sort of thing. And and that's when my mother, she started to, like, have these, she started to get really, really nervous, I guess, and tried to corner me with all these questions like, you know, do you ever want to see us again and, you know, stuff I wasn't ready to talk about, yeah. And so when your mom said, uh, you like, do you never want to see us again, um, what was your response to that? I said, I'm not ready to talk about that. I, I said, actually, no, I didn't. I said, um... I I started kind of like RTR. I was like, I feel angry then because, you know, I feel as if you're just saying that to guilt me. Right. That's not exactly RTR, but it's pretty close, right? Because you kind of go into a conclusion there, but that doesn't matter. Right, right, I mean, right. you're not in a, in a relationship that you don't really want to... Uh, sustain, but uh, well, they obviously saw that you were frightened and, and angry by the interaction, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So, why do you think there's such, and I'm not saying this is true all the time, but in the phase that you're going through right now, why do you think there's so little pleasure at the prospect of independence? I don't know. Is the dominant emotion that you're feeling at the moment with regards to them, is it fear? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good, right? So we know what the primary emotion is. And what are the thoughts that are preceding the fear? Like, you have to be scaring yourself with some kind of story. And by story, I don't mean that it's necessarily false, but there's a thought or a series of thoughts that you're having prior to the emotion. They're going to... What? You can know. Like, come over. And do what? I don't know. Like, um, <sighs> like, 
I don't know. <laughs> this is, I don't know. It sounds really crazy. Like, they're just gonna go over and pound on the door and, and like, you know, wait for us for me and and try to, I don't know, confront us somehow. I don't know. I'm just... Oh, I know, because, I mean, Christina's parents have done this to us a couple of times. Right. Right? They come pounding on the door. Right? Yeah. So what do you do if they do that? Stay inside. I don't know. Right. And then if they keep pounding on the door, you call the cops. Right? Right. You're not a kid anymore. You have the right of peace and security and serenity within your own home. Right? And nobody, nobody gets to be pounding on your door and scaring you. Christine and I have got this thing worked out because she might be with a patient, right, when they come by. That she's going to stay with her patient. I'm going to have to go downstairs, open the door to her parents and say, you will now leave our property or I will call the police and furthermore we will be getting a restraining order. I'm going to go to the wall to protect my wife. I'm not a kid anymore. And if people want to start screwing with me, I'm going to make it stop. You are in a social environment where you have property rights. And you can exercise those property rights to the point where you can keep bad people away from you. That you remember that you're inside a social context where people pounding on your door, if you don't want them to, is illegal. Right. And, uh, gee, I guess we have a topic, sweetie, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> well, um, for those who uh, have been following some of the Defu drama that uh, Christina and I have been going through, more so Christina than myself, uh, Christina has not seen her parents for about three years. It'll be three years at the end of this month. And um, we've had relatively little contact with them. They've sent a couple of letters and they've left some angry voicemails, but for some reason that we can't quite figure out because we don't know what's going on. And this has been the case where, you know, surgeries have occurred and we've hung tough and all this, that and the other. But now we are getting the drive-bys and not just the drive-bys, but the coming up to the porch and aggressively and repeatedly ringing the doorbell. And so, brave philosophers that we are, we hide upstairs. <laughs> and fortunately, we only have one car in the driveway, so... It doesn't, and it was a, by pure chance they came by last weekend, and um, they. Um, uh, it was just by pure chance because we weren't expecting them. Somebody rang the doorbell, and I thought it was somebody I was working on the fence with, and uh, came down and just happened to see that it was Christina's mom, and she hadn't cupped her hands around the window, so she couldn't see into the house, I guess, at that point. So uh, she didn't see me. So then we hid in the, um, and unfortunately, because we have an open concept house, if they were to go around the house during the day, they can see into every room. So there's no particular place to hide downstairs. And if they happen to be looking in, when um, we go upstairs, they can see us go upstairs because, as I said, it's a pretty open concept house. So yesterday, Christina uh, was driving back uh, from somewhere and saw their car and couldn't tell what, or their sort of make and, and color of car. And Oh, and they're coming back now. Are they coming back? I'm pretty sure that's them. Do they normally drive with their lights on? Uh, the lights are automatic lights. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we have, we have this uh, parental invasion that's going no, on at the them. moment. <laughs> and uh, they just sort of rang the doorbell as we were getting ready for the show. Christina came upstairs, and now we're upstairs where we can't be seen. And so we have, uh, we have an, a, a parental <laughs> eruption on our hands and... Uh, it's amazing, of course, how this stuff can just start up after a couple of years of not seeing them. But the, the DFU process is long and involved and uh, tends to occur in waves, if that makes any sense. So from that standpoint, it is a, uh, it is a difficult thing. So just, just sort of pointing this out, A, to share, and <laughs> sort of B, to point out that it is not an easy process. And um, we are going to have to send them a... Uh, uh, we could try sending a letter, but they seem to be, if they came by last weekend and they came by twice this weekend, well, sooner or later, we'd, they're just going to catch us if they keep coming. I mean, right, that's just going to happen. Right? I didn't want it to happen today because we've got a show to run. But uh, sooner or later, they're going to catch us, and then the fireworks are really going to fly. And that's not the end of the world. 
um, because the the only conversation will be get off our property or we'll call the cops. That's the only conversation. There's not going to be because they're going to be oh why and and what did we do and how can we make it better and all this that and the other. And there is of course no possibility of that conversation going forward in any kind of productive way. So it is going to be a pretty savage and unpleasant scene, uh, which of course you would naturally expect when you have uh, de food. Because if it wasn't going to be a savage and unpleasant scene, then we wouldn't have de food. <laughs> so this is just the inevitability of what occurs in these kinds of situations. And uh, so I just sort of wanted to share with you what's going on. This is a, a sad, sad state to be in, in your 70s, but uh, this is the choice that people make to be religious, to be cultural bigots. Uh, this is the choice that people make, and this is where it ends up for them. And there's nothing that can be done other than to hold the fort as best we can and wait for this particular storm to, to subside. And it will recur. There will be another set of storms when one of them gets sick. And, uh, um, uh, you know, it, it's hard to get out of a cult, you know. It's, <laughs> it's hard to get out of a cult. You know, the, the family is the cult. I mean, we're just trying to, to solve it from this standpoint. Um, Steph, would you recommend that somebody who defoos just move to another place far away from foo, nem foo members? I mean, that's a, that's a tough question. I don't have a particularly s strong answer. I would say that it can be easier, but is, is, is it disruptive, right? I mean, we've, uh, we've bought a house. You know, are we going to sell the house and move? And uh, where are we going to move to, right? Because Christina is bound geographically according to her license which, along with you wonderful listeners, is my lifeline to food, sustenance, and shelter, so we don't have that particular option. Uh, we could move to some other house and spend a month or two selling this house, go and buy another house, which, I mean, but basically we're talking hundreds of hours of work to avoid a situation. Uh, but, um, no, I mean, uh, it will simply come down to uh, I'm not going to move uh, because there are bad people who are knocking on our door. But what I will do is, uh, well, and that's why it's so great that I'm working from home, that we will simply tell them to get off our property. And if we have to involve the police and get a restraining order, we'll have to do that. I mean, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a shame. But, uh, of course, this is one of these situations that, uh, that you would expect them to be invasive and ugly and unpleasant about this. Uh, because otherwise, we'd still have them in our life, right? But, uh, no, I'm not, uh, not going to move because there's a couple of elderly Greek people on my trail. <laughs> Steph and I talked about this at you know over for for quite a while yesterday and uh, over the last week or so because uh, when they when they drove by last week for the first time uh, I think they did a drive by about a year and a half ago they just actually drove by they but they didn't ring the bell I, I happened to see them through the window um, but last week was the first time they actually rang the doorbell and. Uh, since then, I've sort of been on walking on eggshells, uh, looking out the window, uh, and you know when the doorbell rings, and I'm not expecting a client. It's a little freaky, <laughs> um, but I, I honestly think the best way to handle this at this particular point is uh, we could send them a fax and say, you know, please don't drive by. Uh, I don't think I think they they do know that I work from home, so I don't think that they're going to try and come by during the day when I have clients. I don't know that they're aware that I also see clients in the evening, so that's a possibility. They might actually try to come by one evening, but I will have clients there, and I don't think that they have the balls to actually interrupt my work. I think they just have too much uh, uh, social... Uh, anxiety about that. Yeah, anxiety about that. And they... Um, th I don't think that they would do that. I do think that the best thing for, for us to do is just to, at this particular point, just ignore them. Uh, I had someone else who was harassing me with phone calls that I had sort of uh, separated a friend, from. A friend, right? A friend, and the phone calls were incessant. and yeah, they a couple were of days for a week. A couple weeks. of day, home phone number, and to the point where we had to turn the uh, home phone off because it was uh, interrupting my sessions, and I would have to turn the ringer off on my business phone as well because it was just ringing incessantly. And so... Um, I just said, you know, I mean, the, the principles of extinction are if you don't respond, the, uh, the behavior will cease after a period of time. There might be a little bit of a flurry of activity, but it will eventually just cease, and that's exactly what happened. So I'm hoping this will happen with my parents. I somehow think that they are going to be a bit more persistent than my friend was. So uh, this kind of situation is uh, ugly, uh, unpleasant, stressful, but this is how the world changes, not, not through Ron Paul 
not through articles, not through even posting on the Free Domain Radio Board, though it's good practice, not through listening to podcasts, but making these kinds of decisions in your life. This is philosophy in action, and uh, it is not pretty, though it is essential.